Now, Brad, um, on Earth, I wanted to get a close-up view of something far away, a really detailed view. Um, there's two ways to get it. One would be come up very close, like if I want to see every hair on your chin, I'd come either close or I'd use a telescope with big magnification. That's right. Now, we're not talking about magnification here, I and mean, why not? Because, really, magnification is not actually getting you more light, right? Magnification is simply is saying that we have a limited amount of light and we're almost artificially changing the amount that we see. What we really want to do is increase the amount of light that we can detect on whatever it is we're observing. Yeah, so for astronomers, we don't think magnification, right. we think resolution. That's right. So resolution is the sharpness of what we see. Um, if you take a, a blurry image and magnify it, it just becomes a bigger, blurry that's right. image, but you don't it's, actually see anything more. That's you right. You usually see less because by the time you made it bigger, it's got fainter. So um, for the human eye, um, we, we talk about magnification because um, we, that means we can make, see things bigger. But once you've got past the resolution limit of your telescope, all you're doing is making... Actually, the image worse. Yeah. That's right. So what we want to increase is the resolution not the magnification. It's, imagine you have a big screen TV and there's only two pixels in it. Well, it doesn't matter how big the TV is, you're not seeing much. Conversely, if you have a really small TV with lots and lots of pixels, you could zoom in on it and still see some detail. And that's what we're trying to do here with space telescopes. Okay, so we've got this equation. Um, this is the sharpness wavelength over diameter. Now that's, how much can we actually see if we're looking down from a space mission. Well, we actually then have to add one more other term here, and that really is the height, right? Because you imagine if I'm looking here, or I'm looking here with the same eye, as you said, whether I'm close to you or far away, I'm going to see slightly less. So when looking down on Earth from space, we also now have to budget in how high or where the orbit of the telescope is, as we talked about earlier in this course. Okay, so we've taken the previous equation. We've used a bit of trigonometry. This is a tan for those who uh, remember their trigonometry from school. It's for the most part, it just goes away. It's a button on your calculator. That's right. And we've now multiplied by the height of the spacecraft. That's right. Because even if you've got the same resolution and you're further away, that's going to correspond to a bigger actual physical scale. Exactly. So let's take an example of this. It's nice to talk about numbers, but so we, let's say we want to build a little 20 centimeter telescope. So eight inches, Yep. you know, okay. plenty of these on the ground I show school students with. You can see the rings of Saturn on mm -hmm. Earth from it. Now we're going to put that in space at about 400 kilometers. And as we so talk- That's a pretty low Earth orbit. Low Earth orbit, but not far off, say, where Hubble Space Telescope is. Yep. And we're just going to look at the orange color of light. Yeah, the middle of the visible range, roughly right. speaking. So if we put our 600 nanometers for the wavelength, 20 centimeters for the diameter and 400 kilometers for our height, yep. we can see 1.5 meters. Okay, so that means a person would be a pixel. That's right. So not very good, but it's also a very small telescope, so maybe not bad. But I want to see more than just you as a pixel. I want to see some detail. What can we do about it? Well, let's imagine now we put a four meter telescope in there. So this is taking Australia's largest telescope on the ground, the AAT, and putting it into space. And this is about the largest mirror you'd be able to fit in the nose cone of a rocket. Exactly. So it's unlikely there are spy satellites much bigger than this. That's right. We're getting pretty and much... This would be a very expensive spy satellite. That's right, and that's possible. But we're going to keep the same orbit and the same colors of wavelength. So we're only changing the size of the mirror. And now we can see 10 centimeters. So that's actually starting to get some detail out of here. I mean, viewed from up above, I'd probably be three pixels across now. That's right. You're, you're starting to have a few pixels across. You're starting to see a little bit of detail. You're probably not going to recognize people. You're, not you're gonna definitely not going to read newspaper or even number plates. Maybe if you held a number plate up. And used <laughs> With really big number plates, that's right. Now, there's a lot of talk about deconvolution. And you see lots, lots of spy movies. They, can right. you unblur this image? And... To an extent, you can do better than this if you kind of know what's going on down there. That's right. Like if you know something's going to be black letters on a white background and you've got a really high quality but blurry image, you might be able to unblur a little bit and say, that's a K or something that's like right. this. That's and, right. And, and sometimes if you use different colors of light in combination, you can get a little bit more detail because you know, well, that actually is a tree and it should be really green. So we can enhance it that way. But you're still not going to get much better than this. As we said, this ends up being kind of the physical limit. Now, keeping in mind, the one thing we haven't looked changed yet, 
is the wavelength. Okay, let's go have a shorter wavelength, shall we? Or so yeah. Work? So let's go. Well, let's let's go to near infrared. Let's try and look at night vision, right? Okay, you know, yep. Near infrared. People think, can we see things at night? Well, we're going to take that small telescope, keep it at a Hubble orbit, and now we're seeing six meter resolution. And uh, this wavelength isn't really long enough to have thermal infrared vision. That's right. So that you probably need to be out more like. 10, 10 microns, 000, exactly. so maybe four times worse than this. And this is generally the case, that night vision infrared, because you're working at longer wavelengths, uh, you're going to have pretty bad resolution. That's right, because even if we put that four meter telescope in there, still 30 centimeters, you're still only one or two pixels. Yep. But if we do go to that mid infrared, that thermal vision, as you said, yep. we're getting 50 meter resolution with our small telescope. So, you know, that's kind of saying this room is... That's all buildings. <laughs> is one pixel. Yes. Right. You take an image from Earth and an entire building is one single pixel. Imagine if your phone took it and a building was one pixel. Yeah. Not a great resolution. But that might be enough to, for example, spot a column of tanks or a, uh, a new suburb or something like this. Perfectly fine. And you, this, and this, you're not going to be tracking a person running through the undergrowth. Exactly. So it really depends on also what's in the background. What are you looking at with respect to? Because it really doesn't matter how big you make it, even if we bump it up to four meters, we're still the resolution of a person. We're still not going to get there that much better. But there also then becomes the realistic aspect is we've only talked about low Earth orbit. A lot of those satellites are actually in geosynchronous orbit. Yes, yeah, so a low Earth orbit has the benefit that you're low and therefore can see more detail. That's right. The trouble is you can only see quite a narrow swathe of the Earth exactly. as you go over it. And so as your satellite orbits around, um, you've got a very detailed view of that narrow part, but there could be anything going on you know, a few hundred kilometers one side or a few hundred kilometers the other side. And you're only able see. to look at it for a few minutes because you're still passing over it. And you might not orbit. come back for many, many, as the Earth rotates underneath, you're not going to come back on the next orbit. Exactly. And in fact, in many Cold War encounters, various militaries, they knew perfectly well when the satellites of their enemies were coming right. over and they would make sure they only move things when the satellite was somewhere else. Exactly. Whereas if you're in a higher Earth orbit, you can see more of the Earth at one time. That's right. Um, and you can also, I think there might be something over there, and then just stare at it. I mean, a geostationary orbit would be the best because you can then look at the whole place for the whole time. That's where a lot of weather satellites are at. Exactly. But then they're trying to look at a hurricane, which is a lot bigger than any of the things we're talking about here. And that's right, because when you put something, your big spy telescope, our four meter telescope at 36,000 kilometers an hour, you now go from 10 centimeters to almost seven meters. So that just becomes so much bigger. And as you go into the min infrared, you know, your resolution now is the size almost of a, a street, right? 110 meters. Again, maybe it's good depending on if you want to resolve something, but this is all the, these trade-offs that we really have to start thinking about. What do you want to look at? Why? How big can you make it? And for how long? And so these are all these trade-offs that we have to budget in in building our telescope when we observe some space. Now, of course, you could get sharper wavelengths by going to shorter wavelengths. We had 600 nanometers. That's right. The trouble is you can't get much shorter than that. By the time you're down below about 400 nanometers, the atmosphere is starting to be opaque because of the ozone layer. Exactly, and we start to run into other problems as we're about to explore.